Welcome to the finale of the NFL Imperialism franchise. You already know what you're here for, but if you somehow don't and somehow clicked on this video without knowing there's six other episodes, then I have a playlist just for you, linked down below. It's been a fun series, but it can get a whole lot funner if we get a Super Bowl win in this episode. But before we begin, let me give you a quick recap of what happened in the previous episode. Previously on the Imperialism franchise. I get a few good blocks and some lucky animations, but it's good enough to cash in six. We're gonna have a 10-0 lead over the Kansas City Chiefs, and we're able to burn the entire clock out with this field goal kick just to rub it in their faces because we just beat the Kansas City Chiefs. 99 overall Travis Kelsey joins the Steelers. Now to the 32 yard line we're handing off the Najee Harris and things have just been looking too good for this game as I take this one to the crib. I'm going up the midfield again got Deontay Johnson and he dives in the end zone and I try to scramble but here's my first mistake of the game and that's on the ground. The Chargers pick it up. You already know the drill. When I'm that short to the goal line, I'm doing a quarterback sneak. So Kenny Pickett makes up for what he did earlier as you watch as I throw. Probably one of the worst passes right here, and it just gets intercepted by the middle linebacker, and that's where we'll end the game here. So yes, that means the Jaguars are eliminated. We already knew the Giants were eliminated. They got skipped. They're 4-7-2. And, and on our third page as well, you can see the Lions who sat at 17. They were also eliminated. I want to show you this graphic real quick, which will give us the playoff seedings, and yes, you can see there are buys. We are including buys. Can Stafford find a target? He's going towards the end zone. It's caught by Higby. It depends on this kick, and it's going to sell wide right. The Rams will hold on and win this game 27-24. They will end up winning this game with a Jonathan Taylor go-ahead touchdown. 41 to 31 and Desmond Ritter at starting quarterback wins this game 28 to 23. Jalen Hurts airs it and we have a missed assignment for a touchdown. Devontae Smith completely burns the defense and that's going to put up six for a go ahead lead for the Philadelphia Eagles. And there was just nothing the Cowboys could have done. They lost 35 to 38 because of that. Allen delivers again another great throw. We're at the 30. No it's on the ground. It's picked up by the Jets. Jets defense comes up clutch. Once again the Chiefs score. That's probably going to be a common theme this game so that means we're gonna have to score in every single possession like this one right here Allen Robinson off to the races he burns the entire secondary and we tie this game up at 14 and we're in the end zone it's gonna make it 21 to 24 from the two yard line now Najee Harris has it again I know we have to hit the end zone here and that's what's gonna happen here as George Pickens easy route easy money we are in the lead 41 to 40 31 yard line play action pass another opening this is to win it on the buzzer two seconds left actually George Pickens brings it in and we are moving on from the wild card round an offensive explosion of a game in Kansas City so it's now up to the Elite Eight teams, which is the divisional round if you can look at it that way. And I already gave you the matchups, here they are right now. Once again, the reason that these are the matchups is that these are the only possible combinations of actual playing games. So we're actually going to be taking on the number three Packers here. But just like last time, remember we have some other divisional games. We're going to simulate these, we're going to see what happens, and then we're going to play our game. We're going to start the West Coast again. We have the number two Niners versus the number 13 Rams. <laughs> From Santa Clara, California, it's a Niners lead 33 to 31 with a minute remaining. But we will start with the fourth down of five, which Matthew Stafford will have to conquer, getting these five yards here. And he's going to look no further other than Justin Jefferson, a new Ram, as he gets them to midfield. And they're going to call a timeout here. I lied, this is Madden. They don't have a brain, so they actually didn't use their timeout. Speaking of not having a brain, look at Matthew Stafford here as he's just going to burn the final timeout here and lose 10 yards. So now it's third down and 20, and this is the final final play of the game. It's just going to need Stafford to throw this one deep to the end zone because field goal range is not even a worry anymore and he can't even get out of the pocket. He just takes another sack and what a horrible way to win this game. What was Stafford doing there? The Niners will win 33-31 to in the divisional round and on top of that, the player they will be stealing will be obviously Justin Jefferson who just adds on to the stacked list of players on the 49ers. And now the West Coast will turn gold as the Niners come out on top bringing down the number 13 seed Rams. What a run. Now we'll go to Hard Rock Stadium in Miami, Florida, where it's currently a seven-point lead by the Atlanta Falcons with just a minute remaining. The Dolphins are looking to tie this one up as Tua hits up Mike Evans in a Dolphins uniform. Yes, that's Mike Evans in a Dolphins uniform. I said that correctly, and he's going to put him to the 35. Now at the 8, though, once again, we're going to Evans again, and this is tying the game up with 10 seconds on the board. It's 28 apiece, and this is going to bring it to O. Team. We're here with how the Atlanta Falcons will win the toss. They're going to start with the football. And starting out overtime from the 44, Desmond Ritter starting quarterback for the Atlanta Falcons. I don't really know what he was doing here, and that's going to cause a punt, meaning the Miami Dolphins will get it right back. And Tua at midfield 
going deep. No, he'll stay first down to Tyreek Hill. Yeah, he's still part of the Miami Dolphins. I know he's not wearing 10 anymore, but he came back in fashion one number 84. And that's going to be enough to hand it off to the backup running back, this white dude named Ingold. And he has the walk-off touchdown for the Miami Dolphins to move him on to the next round in the playoffs. Which will result in a 34-28 win for the Miami Dolphins. No need for an extra point. And Miles Garrett, a 99 overall, will now join the Miami Dolphins. This team is a lot more stacked than I thought they were. The West Coast is gold and the East Coast is blue as the Miami Dolphins will take down the number 10 seeded Falcons. And now from MetLife Stadium, it's home of Aaron Rodgers now. That's a high scoring game, 44 to 38. And just before the two minute warning, Aaron Rodgers has the football. We'll start on second down and 10 from their own 26. Rodgers backs up eight yards. He's unloading this one deep. And we have an explosive play in New York for the first time since. Okay, well, I'm actually going to stop there. I can't say that. Anyways, Eagles now down by a point. Hurts throwing it off his back foot. We had another explosive play. Two back-to-back -back explosive plays. How ironic. This one's going to be a pick six this time. And the Jets will take an eight-point lead with Kyle Duggar. Well, the Eagles get the ball back one final chance this time. And it's well defended, which means the Eagles just sold on this one. And the Jets will win in a very high-scoring game, 52-44. to Aaron Rodgers, I guess he was made for the New York life here. The player they will steal will be Mark Andrews, a 95 overall tight end, adding to the arsenal of the New York Jets under Rodgers' command. And out of all the teams to come out of the Northeast region, it ended up being the New York Jets, the number six seed as they take down the number seven Eagles. And just like that, it's time to join live from Lambeau for our divisional game against the Green Bay Packers, where it looks like we'll be starting off with the ball at the 33 yard line, and we're gonna go ahead and get Allen Robinson involved for this first down pickup shown here. Followed shortly from the 49 as we hand off the Najee Harris. Things are going too well right now as he's going to break a tackle and put us to the 37 yard line in Packers territory. Now second down and 12 I back up and I hit my tight end, backup tight end that is to the 11 yard line. That's Gentry on that one. He puts us to a first down and goal and what's new? We'll go ahead and hit the halfback dive for Najee Harris to bring us to a 7-0 lead over the Green Bay Packers. Obviously no one said this is going to be easy as the Packers tie right back up I had a dirty route by Deontay Johnson as he stiff arms this dude and gets us the first down to the 45. Next up, second and 10. I look midfield and there's A-Rob just streaking. He almost got the touchdown here but couldn't break the final tackle. But we'll take a red zone appearance as first down and goal from the 6. I go to this dude which you probably never heard of in your life. Yes, that is the one and only Anthony Miller. Number 17 for the Steelers. He'll put up 14 to us, and the Packers will tie it up again. So it's 14 apiece. I go up midfield. I have no clue how I completed this. A little luck is going to be involved for this video. You'll see how. And Deontay Johnson gets that one off. Two-minute warning now as we see a tight end going up the middle of the field. No one's even close to him. That's Patty Fryermuth. 14 apiece. I'm going to call a timeout here on first down and 10 and get to third down and two from the five yard line. It's where I'll look again just for a short little route right here to get us in the end zone to George Pickens for his first catch of the day to end up being a touchdown. 21 to 14 going to the locker room. Now getting back from the half, the Packers did get a field goal. Once again, I was able to barely sneak this pass and I have no clue how I'm getting so lucky with these. Usually these would be interceptions if it was any other game right now. But 21 to 17 is what we'll take it at right now and actually have to punt the ball away. So it did nothing for us. That's good. Also want to mention how obvious running into the kicker is right here. I mean, what was that? Continuing on, the Packers will get a field goal out of that. So it's now 21-20. We still lead. And after a few really good blocks, Najee Harris was able to hit the outside here. And he almost took this one to the house. But also, the refs, thankfully, I'm giving them a little bit of ad revenue off this video. So they called a really puny call right here. Apparently, it's a personal foul, unnecessary roughness by Eric Stokes, even though he barely shrug me out of bounds whatever we'll take it and we'll end up getting to the three yard line second down and goal where you already know what's going to happen it's Najee Harris as he just walks his way in and we'll make it an eight point lead at this point 28 to 20. Continuing on, I'm simulating the defense right here, and we end up getting the ball back right at the 20-yard line, but I guess this was just a cue for the game for Najee Harris to feel bad for whatever reason, because as you can see, I handed it off to Harris, and guess what he's going to do? He's going to fumble and give it right back to the Packers, so that's just really lovely, I can say. Thankfully, it didn't matter much as the Packers would not be able to score, but we end up getting to a third down and 12, which we just ran to nothing, and it's fourth down and 13. We were not able to drain out the Packers' timeouts and win this game, so unfortunately, we have to punt the football away, which is the last thing I'm going to do. I mean, I'm currently wetting my my pants right now but the Packers scored a touchdown and they didn't get the two-point conversion which was the luckiest thing I could have ever got here I really expected the Madden AI to score a touchdown and two-point conversion overtime was fully expecting here but no instead we're taking a knee and we beat the Green Bay Packers in divisional round 28 to 26 
which will give us our man Travis Kelsey back. We had him before, we have him again. The 99 overall tight end, and he's going to help us win some more games. I hope, at least. And then there were four. On to the conference round, which I'm pretty sure you can already guess what the matchups are going to be, which will be us, the 12 seed Steelers, taking on the number two Niners, and then you have the number one Dolphins versus the number six Jets. And I easily think the Niners are 100 times better than the Dolphins. The Dolphins are a number one seed fraud. The Niners are seriously the best team on the map, so this is going to be the true challenge, in which I feel like if we win it, we'll have a much easier Super Bowl. But who knows what's going to happen. We just played a really good game against the Packers. We just cannot throw any interceptions or have any bad turnovers. That's the key to victory. But first, let's begin with our other conference game, which is the Dolphins versus the Jets in Miami. Let's go. <laughs> It's the conference championship games. We're going to start with the Jets and Dolphins. Aaron Rodgers and the Dolphins tied up at 24 apiece. It looks like we're going to overtime, but Hail Mary King might have something to say about it. I lied. He has nothing to say about it. We are going to overtime. Where it looks like the Miami Dolphins, the home team, will start with the football. Now, first down 10 from the 20. Tua delivers. He has Tyree Kill, and his speed is just too good for the Jets defense as he picks up 20 yards here. And now third down and 13 from midfield. Tua backs up about 10 yards here, and it looks like he's going to barely get this one off before taking the sack. And guess who he finds? Tyree Kill again finds an opening. He's good enough to put him to the 14-yard line now. But they get to a third down and three, and I think it's time to go to concussion protocol again, Tua, because I have no clue what you're looking at here. Maybe a fan. That ended up setting up a field goal, which is still good. It'll be 27-24. to 24. I mean, the Packers have to at least respond with points here. It's second down and 10. Rodgers throws a save on Barkley short and he fumbles the game away. Well, I now understand why Rodgers wants to go to the woods in isolation and take psychedelics because I really feel bad from here. And that was completely out of his control. Anyways, the Dolphins ended up winning 27 to 24. Who do they get out of it? Quinn and Williams, the 98 overall defensive tackle, will be joining the Dolphins by side with Miles Garrett and Aaron Donald. This defense is scary and they're going to the Super Bowl. So now the Jets are eliminated. The Dolphins blue takes over the East coast and they'll put a winner between us and the Steelers which is this game right here the conference championship game in Santa Clara this is it to make it to the Super Bowl we're at zeros right now but I find a really good opening right here down the right seam it's Deontay Johnson as he'll just walk his way out of bounds and now play action pass going to Y I have it complete the Deontay Johnson again but of course he fumbles the football I remember telling myself 100 times the one thing I did not need ever any of these games was turnovers and there you have it that was an early one which I really wish I had back it was out of my control I did get the ball back and the Steelers didn't score and I was able to get a really good run by Najee Harris here to set up to a second down and one and puts us in Niners territory as I run play action pass again and I already know Tom Brady is smiling from his retirement home on this one right here it's second down and 18 thankfully you get the ball back thanks for offensive tackle diving on it that sack ended up being a fourth down and 20 for us which will take the points with Justin Tucker making it 3-0 once again the Niners could not score which I'm really surprised so it's now third down and 12 I go up the middle of the field and Deontay Johnson makes up for that fumble he did earlier it's to the 48 yard line remember how I said I can't have any turnovers well about that yeah uh here we go here's another pick it only makes sense for the Niners to score a touchdown here and now my routes looks like I just consumed 20 mushrooms in the forest but thankfully I get another completion here which is a little bit lucky but we'll have a first down and 10 Deontay Johnson he's been doing it all for us this game and we end up taking a very long field goal this is 56 yards but Justin Tucker is him I'm so glad I have him as he's gonna make it six to seven now once again we get the ball back and the Niners cannot score so I'm going to Najee Harris on the ground he shreds a tackle here and gets a lot more yards than I bargained for so I call a timeout here from midfield and now second down to 10, I still have the squiggly routes. And once again, I go to Najee Harris in the passing game again. It works too well as I call another timeout to the 37. And I'm not going to risk it. I'm going to take my third field goal of the half. The only points I have are because of this man right here. Justin Tucker, the greatest kicker to ever live. It's 9-7 to seven going to the locker room with a lead. Now getting back out, the Niners scored a field goal, but I'll get Travis Kelsey involved again. So it's 9-10. to 10. And now third down and goal from the 5. I try to find an opening here to Deontay Johnson, or excuse me, George Pickens, but Fred Warner defends it well. So once again, guess what I'm doing? I'm kicking the fourth field goal of this game for Justin Tucker. He is completely carrying us. Him and the defense. That is the whole story of this conference championship game. I have no clue how we're still in getting this game, getting field goals only. So now 12 to 10 just before the two minute warning and I'm trying to find an opening here to Travis Kelsey but Nick Bosa has to happen and now it's a fourth down and 12 so guess what I'm gonna do I'm gonna kick a 58 yarder field goal he's already nailed four this game can he nail five Justin Tucker makes it 15 to 10 
That's the only reason we're in this game right now. Him and the defense. It is insane. And the Niners, I simulate our defense. They couldn't score. We get the ball back with a minute left. And all we have to do is get a first down. And we did just that. So we are moving on to the Super Bowl. I can't believe we beat the Niners with only field goals. And because of that, we're getting Justin Jefferson, a 96 overall wide receiver to our team to join in the Super Bowl. And just look at this. Justin Tucker, 5 for 5. 58 long. This is the story of the game. It's crazy because because I remember hesitating on taking a player from the Ravens and I thought Justin Tucker was stupid. We've made it. I don't know how, but we've done it. We've made it to the top two teams. It's going to be a rematch in the regular season. We already played the Dolphins once and we beat them. We can do it again. It's the number one versus the number 12 seed. Just before the Super Bowl, I want to compare our rosters. Our best player is Travis Kelsey, but we're going against on defense Miles Garrett, Aaron Donald, Quinnen Williams, Jalen Ramsey, and they also have some good offensive players too, like Tyreek Hill and Tristan Wurz. It's going to be pretty close. Live from the Super Bowl, it's the Steelers, it's the Dolphins. It all comes down to this, the final game and the NFL Imperialism Franchise Series as Kenny Pickett We'll be going against Tua and the quarterback battle of a lifetime, you could say. But we're starting out the game strong as Justin Jefferson, our new target we just picked up this week to the Super Bowl, brings us into the five as we have a 72-yard completion, getting us right to where we need to be to score seven points in the board early in the Super Bowl. We'll do exactly that. It's the bread and butter. There it is. Najee Harris brings in six in the Super Bowl. Just what I wanted to see. And we have an early lead over the Miami Dolphins. But that won't happen for long as it's 7-7. to seven And I throw another bad interception. I'm going to keep on telling myself I can't be doing this. It's Levante David who picked this one off as I was trying to get the Travis Kelsey. But good thing is, is that the Dolphins are struggling defending Justin Jefferson as I get another huge completion and hoping to tie this game back up at 14 apiece. First down to 10, I hit Travis Kelsey correct this time. He's able to truck his way to the first down. And from here, seven, third down and 15 from the 17-yard line. Instead, I take a sack and I'll have to take the three points with my man Justin Tucker, who proved that he can easily nail any field goal from anywhere, so we'll make it 14 to 10. Getting back up, the Dolphins couldn't score, so I run play action pass. I have no clue why the Dolphins are struggling against this route, but it's the third time I've done it with Justin Jefferson and it's worked like a charm every single time as he puts us to the 39. First down and 10 down by four. Najee Harris has a solid run here after some really good blocks by my O-line and he shreds the tackle off to the 24 yard line. And now from the 24 again I go to the passing game with Najee Harris because I can depend on him every single time as he's going to get us to the 10 yard line plus for a first down and goal where once again we hand it off to Najee Harris. He bounces off everyone and we have a lead in the Super Bowl 17 to 14. Dolphins would tie it up just before the half and I don't really know what happened here I wanted to get another field goal but I accidentally lobbed the ball to Travis Kelsey and instead of taking the lead before halftime we'll have to go tied as I throw another interception I know that was kind of stupid but anyways getting back from the locker room I hit Travis Kelsey for real this time and we're down by a touchdown as the Dolphins scored first and I'm hoping to tie this game up here with a risky pass to Travis Kelsey as I do just that it's 24 apiece now in the Super Bowl and we're closing in on the fourth quarter too so now third down and one with Najee Harris I have no clue what kind of run defense this is in the fourth quarter by the Miami Dolphins but if you want me to win this game just go ahead and let me win it first down and 10 from the 36 now as I speak we get to a third down and three we're handing off to Najee Harris again the blocks have been really good this game running the football has just been perfect. Over 100 yards now for Najee Harris. Second on inches, once again now for Najee Harris. I didn't want to score this fast, but I will take a late touchdown in the fourth quarter to take a lead of the Miami Dolphins. Now we just got to hope our defense can stop. So I go to simulate, and there it is. Our defense comes up clutch once again. It's been the story of the whole episode, the story of the playoffs. Our defense, other than the wild card, has been really good, and all I needed was a first down. There it was. That was the final first down. And the timeouts are starting to get called. As it looks like I'm getting close, I take the knee and we end up winning the Super Bowl on a crazy three-game run in this episode. I really did not think we were good enough to do it, but our defense and Justin Tucker proved just right that we had what we needed. It's a Steelers victory in the Super Bowl and the Steelers gold will take over the entire map on the NFL Imperialism franchise. This is exactly the result we wanted. We got it. Did we get a little lucky? Maybe. Our defense decided to really step it up and play for whatever reason. 
helped out a lot. We also did pretty good other than the few interceptions we threw. But anyways, that's how we ended it. We took over the map and Steelers gold. But here's my heartfelt message. Thank you to all the people who watched this series from the beginning to end. Or if you just stopped by the middle of it, I don't care. It was very experimental. And it was fun to do in the offseason. I hope it just dragged you through this summer and to get to the next football season, which is going to be starting really soon. And that included our leader, our quarterback number one, 72 overall, Kenny Pickett. But also for our skill positions, Najee Harris was a big piece of this series to how we were able to win some games. And I can't forget our receivers, which have been here the entire time, including Deontay Johnson, George Pickens, and Allen Robinson. They've also been a big chunk of our success. Justin Jefferson definitely came up clutch during the Super Bowl. Travis Kelce was pretty dominant for us, and then he left, and then he came back, almost like Palpatine in Star Wars. Quentin Nelson made a guest star appearance as well. And I would say this defensive trio we had is the reason why we were able to win the Super Bowl because we had a lot of shutdown drives because these people, including 98 overall Cameron Hayward, Jordavius White at CB1, and our safety Mika Fitzpatrick at 97 overall. I mean, all across the board, our team was at 84 overall. That's pretty decent. Now, to conclude this entire series off, the last thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you a little compilation, and it's going to be all the maps from every episode from week one to now. So, that's going to be it. Enjoy the compilation. Thank you guys so much for watching this series, and I'll see you guys soon.